Hello and welcome to another video. In this one, we're going to be continuing the discussion on C extensions. So if you missed that, I did a video on that and that'll be linked in the description. Uh, but today we're going to be talking about ABI3 and what that means. What does ABI stand for? As well as how to build your own ABI3 packages. Uh, so without further ado, let's jump into it. Okay, so I have a slightly modified C extension from the one that we were working on in the other video. This one is slightly simpler. Uh, just because I didn't want to re-copy and paste the code from the other video, so. <laughs> we got a slightly simpler C extension today. Uh, it's still this Hello World mod module, and in our case, we just have one function that's just going to return uh, this, this string here. And so, uh, what we did last video is we uh, did, we made a virtual env. I'm going to actually make a Python 3.6 virtual env for this video, uh, just to demonstrate some, some things here. So if we virtual vm p python 3.6, uh, and the reason for this will be apparent later when we try and build this and install it on a bunch of different Python versions. Um, but if we pip install dot, you know, we'll be able to install this package and it sets it up, cool. Um, so what I wanted to start talking about is what ABI means and what ABI3 means and how this can make it so I don't have to build so many packages for distributing binary uh, packages for Python. And what ABI stands for, A stands for, or ABI stands for Application Binary Interface. And what this means is that uh, at the C level, it defines a set of functions. And, you know, if you were to change a function signature in an incompatible way, that would define a new ABI because, uh, you know, the calling construct between two versions of your code may be different. Um, and so what Python did is around the time when I think Python 3.2 was was being put together. I don't remember the exact time. It might have been might have been 3.3. Um, they decided that there would be a minimal application binary interface for Python, and so they would uh, kind of sign up for having a set of functions that will remain stable across Python versions. So. Uh, you'll be able to call them in the same C calling construct independent of the Python version that you're running on. And um, if you've worked with other libraries, you know, this is this is a pretty common thing to do in C libraries. You'll have like a, a major version of a library and all of the C functions will, will have the exact same call signature through the entire lifetime of that application binary interface version. Um, this means that you can't like remove functions, you can't remove parameters, you can't rename functions. Uh, you basically have to maintain backwards compatibility there. And so the, the Python pep that kind of defined this and set this aside is pep384, uh, which, you know, way back in 2009, before I was even working on Python stuff at all, uh, defined this stable ABI. And oddly enough, it wasn't... <laughs> It wasn't completely usable on the three main platforms, you know, Python, or sorry, Linux, macOS, and Windows, until earlier this year. So it's it's been almost 10 years uh, since since this was uh, kind of usable. But anyway, I'll walk you through, like, you know, this is all kind of talking about the minimal set of things that would be exposed from the beginning, and then, you know, some other stuff there. But I'm, I'm going to show you how this has an effect on actual packages and why you would want to set up your package in this way. Okay, so let's take this this Hello World package, and I'm going to, so I've already installed it, and you'll see when we install it, vmlib site packages, hello world, you'll see that we get this special .so file, and this file name has a whole bunch of stuff in it. So this is saying it's a cpython uh, 36 with pymalloc, I think with pymalloc, or not pymalloc, I forget what the M stands for. It's either, it's either pymalloc or not pymalloc. Um, on a 64-bit Linux distribution. So that's what all of this nonsense stands for here. Um, and the important thing is here is this 3.6m means that this package won't be importable on other versions of Python. So if I were to make another virtual env here, you know, virtual env vm 3.7, actually we can just, uh, we can just copy this file. cp this, oops, to dot. And if we deactivate our virtual env, that means we won't have it installed. Uh, but you'll see that if we do Python 3.6, we can import hello world because we've put that little SO file in our current working directory, and that works fine. Uh, but you'll notice in other versions of Python, such as 3.7, if we try and import that, 
it won't import that module because it, it's encoded as Python 3.6 and it's, it's saying it's specific to Python 3.6. And that's where the problem becomes. If you want to distribute this, you know, compiled output, uh, you would have to build a package for every single Python version you support, which can be cumbersome, especially when new Python versions come along. Uh, <laughs> if you've been following the, the Python community right now, with, you know, end of October of 2020, um, Python 3.9 has just come out and a bunch of stuff doesn't work in Python 3.9 yet because people have not rebuilt their packages for Python 3.9. Um, but the, the API 3 allows you to build one package and distribute that entirely. So let's, let's demo any, how you would enable ABI3 and then how you would build a package for ABI3. Um, I'm actually going to show you as well, uh, C Python. I'm also going to show you as well what you would do, what you would get if you didn't do ABI3. Um, so the first thing uh, for that is we're going to run pip wheel dot. This will build a wheel package, uh, basically the compiled install output of our package. It's a fancy zip file. I'll probably go over wheels in some other video. Um, but you can see that that wheel also says, you know, C Python 3.6, C, Py C Python 3.6 M. This is the ABI portion. And again, you know, the platform is Linux x86-64. Um, but this is not installable in Python 3.7. Archlam VM 3.7-p, Python 3.7. VM 3.7, then activate. If we do pip install hello world this. Uh, Pip will tell us that this is not a supported wheel on this platform. And it could probably tell us more that the reason is because the API doesn't match. Okay. And with that, let's show you how to enable ABI3. So there's actually two steps to this. One is to enable it at the extension level, and then the other is to enable it at the wheel level. Um, so first we're going to enable it at the extension level. And the way that we do that is by... Uh, let me just indent this so it's a little bit easier to see. We're going to define a special macro. Uh, the way ABI3 is turned on and off is by a special C macro that tells the header files to pick a different set of functions. Uh, and so you do that with define macros, and that's a list. And it's pi limited, I think it's pi limited API. <laughs> uh, I should have probably checked before the video. Oh well. Um, so if you define this macro, now if we, you know. Go back to the Python 3.6, we pip uninstall hello lib and pip install dot. This should, oh, it was called hello world, not hello lib. Uh, this, it did uninstalled it and reinstalled it anyway. Uh, this should change that dot so file name to now be an ABI3 file name. Uh, it didn't. <laughs> Why it didn't? It? Uh, probably because I have the wrong macro. Um, I have one of these packages. Yes, libsass python has this. Define macros, pi limited API none. Oh, right, you also have to set pi limited API to true. <laughs> of course, uh, this is another package that I maintain and, and one of the reasons why I got into this as well is so that I could, um, I could not have to build as many packages. Okay, now that we've done that, we should see ABI3 in the package name. Yeah, so you can see now the SEO file is named hello world.abi3.so. So this this took away all of the like version specific and platform specific setup here. And you'll notice, uh, well, one of the one of the ways this works is this doesn't actually link against libpython. It's dynamically linked when Python's import system picks that up. Okay, but that's only one piece to the puzzle. So that makes this shared, ob shared object ABI3, uh, but unfortunately it does not make the wheel ABI3. So again, if we rm start at wheel and I do pip wheel dot, you'll see that it still builds, it still builds this wheel that's CP36M. So we actually have to tell the wheel system that we're building an ABI3 wheel as well, and that'll help us distribute packages. Now, I usually copy and paste this from another package that I've done, so I'm going to, again, go to do the libsass python setup. Uh, get pull, let me get pull just to make sure we're up to date. And we should be uh, abi3. Mm. Oh, here we go. So, um, this is... <laughs> 
a bit of code that I copy and paste into some of my packages. Uh, I'll tell you, I'll go line by line and explain what's going on here um, and tell you what's going on there. And we also need to do command class equals command class. Okay. So what we're doing here is we are overriding the beatest wheel command in setup tools. And what beatest wheel does is that's how, you know, that's how a wheel gets built when I run pip wheel dot. Uh, there are other ways to do this with PyProduct and, and other wheel building technologies, but I'm just going to talk about the the um, you know vanilla setup tools builds today. Um, and so what I'm doing is if beatest wheel is not installed, so wheel is not available, uh, we're just going to skip setting up this other thing and command class. Oops. Uh, actually, just do it like this. The, the command class in that package is a little more complicated than it needs to be. Okay, so if it's not installed, we're just going to set this command class to the empty dictionary. Command class is how you override different, you know, plugin points to the setup tools machinery. Um, but yeah, we're going to override Beatus wheel. We're going to change finalize options. In finalize options, we're going to be setting Py limited API to a particular C Python version. Um, and so in this case, I'm setting it to CP3 and then whatever the uh, minor version of Python is. So if I build this using Python 3.6, it will set the Py limited API to that minimum version of Python 3.6. And so then when we build this, when we build this, rm startup wheel, and then, oh, we're in the wrong directory. rm startup wheel, and then pip wheel dot. Uh, platform is not defined, right. We need to import platform and import sys. These are our two libraries, that, or the two libraries that we need here. We actually don't need sys because uh, this package only targets Python 3, so I could actually remove this check here. And pip, pip wheel dot you'll see that we get this nice uh, CP36 ABI3 wheel. So this is saying the minimum version that we're supporting is Python 3.6, but it's an ABI3 wheel. So we don't, you know, we don't have the application binary interface specific components in there. Um, and again, it only targets Linux here. So this is how you set up ABI3 and uh, you would usually couple this with many Linux, which I have not done a video on, but I'll probably do a video on that soon. Um, but yeah, and then you'd be able to take this package and let's switch to Python 3.7 and 3 bin activate. If we do pip install that cpython 3.6 ABI3 wheel, you'll see that it successfully installs on Python 3.7 and we can import it and use it. Uh, import hello world, hello world, dot hello world. Cool. Uh, now, the reason that a lot of packages haven't done this yet is the limited ABI is actually pretty limited. Um, and I'll show you what, what happens if you try and use something that's not in that limited ABI. Uh, so let's actually adjust hello world.c to have a little bit of extra code here. I believe pi unicode get length is not in the minimal ABI. Um, let's see. Uh, let's see, uh, pi object star ret. We're just gonna put a little bit of s silly code in here. <laughs> Hope the optimizer doesn't compile it out. Uh, ret printf percent d. We're just gonna put a little print statement in here. Turn ret. Uh, so this will hopefully print the length of this Unicode object um, if we weren't in the minimal API. But I believe if we try and install this, if install dot, I believe this will be a compile error. Well, it might be a runtime error. Because <laughs> uh, I don't think get length is part of the ABI. Uh, import hello world. Yeah, so you can see here that we got this undefined symbol pi unicode get length. And that was because this function, or this, it's actually a macro. This macro is not available in the minimal ABI. Now, if I were to comment out this, uh, the minimal ABI stuff here. So this is how I can quickly turn off. Uh, pip install dot. You'll see that we do have access to that function now. Import hello world, hello world dot hello world. 
And often the way that you can fix this is by not using the macro versions or looking up which functions do the equivalent behavior, uh, but with the minimal ABI. I believe the replacement here is git length. I believe that works. Uh, so this will work because we don't have minimal ABI. Uh, but then if we turn it back on by fixing these three things, and then we pip install dot, it should, it should work again now. Employed hello world. Hello world dot hello world. Cool. Anyway, um, but yeah, that's ABI three. Hopefully you learned something from this, um, and hopefully you, if you maintain a C package, go enable this so that you don't have to keep rebuilding wheels. Um, but anyway, if you have additional things you want me to explain, leave a comment below or reach out to me on the various platforms. But thank you all for watching, and I will see you in the next one.